Patterns I want to look at on the right are again the product of the bird's eye view, of looking down on the world, rather than looking it from that head to toe, um, looking out front that is so dominant uh, in the Western culture. This is Piazzi Smith in the 19th century, looking at the Pyramid of Cheops, but looking at it in terms of its alignment, the significance, what it's saying in terms of its geographical location. This is Dr. Stukey in the 18th century. Looking at Avebury, um, an area marked out by Neolithic man, uh, with standing stones and, and, uh, and uh, an artificial mound. This is the Department of the Environment's uh, way of registering uh, that as an aerial uh, view. Um, and this is Dr. Stukey trying to impose a pattern upon it, in this case trying to show that there's an alchemical system which is being described. Uh, and we may stop at that. Um, but um, it's, it, it does, I think, it is worth considering uh, the degree to which we are so programmed, so conditioned to regard the world with this head to toe. <coughs> looking out in front, head up, right, never looking behind us point of view. That was the essence of modernism, the great verticality, uh, uh, the, the uh, viewing of the world as if the whole world could be understood by us walking around our own two feet and never looking back, uh, never looking in the rear view mirror, always looking out front, the idea of progress onwards and upwards. And this man, Silvery, so doesn't yield very much to us, seen in that one. And this is Maltwood, uh, of course, a flew around it and discerned in the landscape huge figures um, and tried to create a, a system of meaning out of it, uh, which uh, no doubt was conjured mostly out of her own mind, but to try to show that within the landscape there were representations. Uh, but, uh, uh, that could make sense as far as she was concerned. And currently, as you know, in the bid to create the throne, of, to bring back the throne of France, there's lots of books being published dealing with this area in southwest France, trying to make patterns out of the landscape, trying to show a significance uh, as between standing stones and mounds and sacred sites and so forth. All this is relatively absurd, and you must be wondering why I'm taking However, the photograph here of the face of Mars uh, is less uh, easy to dismiss. When we discover that there are uh, a number of congressional committees have been set up uh, in support of the NASA, uh, uh, in support of the attempt to combined uh, United States and Soviet uh, and uh, a visit to Mars, in support of this idea of a face on Mars, always this insistence to find a pattern either in the landscape, whoever it may be. But I do have a serious intent uh, in showing you the sites on, on, on your left and bringing you down with these slides uh, from right out of the Earth or down onto the surface of the, of the planet. I just wanted to remind you that uh, a remote uh, viewing and so forth and remote listening is nothing new, uh, and the dangers of it in terms of surveillance, it's not all innocent, and it's not all simply the benefit of artists to get off on their theories and so forth, if one want to point to them. But I would ask you to look to, the, to this diagram on the right of the platforms for viewing, which are now available to us as, uh, as we come to look at the world. And I want to talk a little bit about The, the whole of the Renaissance tradition could be understood metaphorically uh, as that of um, putting the viewer, of course, in a position of power, giving the viewer a powerful gaze by which everything could be in its place, there could be a place for everything. If you would just consider for a moment what really was happening in, in the use of perspective in the Renaissance. Everything
went back to the vanishing point. There was an absolute rule which governed the position of everything in that space. A place for everything, everything in its place. That fixed the world. It made it very convenient to control it. If you put that sort of pyramid which is made up with the vanishing point uh, at the apex, so to speak, and the base of the pyramid being the picture pane, and put it onto its side, uh, onto its base, then you have a sort of model of communication in a society where information comes from one absolute point, not the vanishing point, but from the priest, uh, from the king, from the top of the pile, and moves down in a one-way linearity, where information simply moves down, and there's no feedback. There's no, no one at the bottom is going to say, but it's not quite like that. This is your picture of reality. These are the rules of how to behave. This is how everything is supposed to work according to your laws. But from down here, it's not like that. There's no feedback in that system. And that's precisely the case with Renaissance painting. And popularly, of course, it's well known that Picasso challenged that. Picasso said, for example, instead of sitting in the stalls, looking at the show going on on the, on the stage behind the preceding march, I want to get up onto the stage. I want to get up into the action. And cubism uh, was very much a product of that point of view. But in the 20th century, in modernist art, it wasn't just a shift of viewpoint that was involved. There was also an interest in trying to make what was invisible visible. I'm showing you these slides on the right because I want to emphasize uh, uh, a metaphor. That is the metaphor of verticality, the metaphor of horizontality. Talked about the point of view of the Renaissance, which required you to look out in front. Everything had to fall into place from your gaze as you stood on your own two feet. That vertical metaphor of the uh, 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 painting itself hanging on the wall, everything having a head to toe correspondence, everything falling into place, that vertical metaphor, of course, is fairly loaded with other meanings. Um, the phallus, the lance, the sword, very often aggressive meanings. Um, and we can think of um, we, can, we can think of how uh, that aggression, uh, commercial, political, and so forth, is spelled out in some of the buildings that represent our hero. But let's look at some of the um, buildings that represent wholly other cultures. This is uh, this is at Chichen Itza. Um, you can look at um, in New Mexico in Taos, where horizontal metaphors abound, where horizontal typifies uh, the culture, the architecture, and where the language even is layered. Uh, the Navajo word "nesta" uh, is is a layered word. It means both the earth. It means horizontal as an abstract sense, and it means reclining woman, that sort of uh, binding of words together. But these are societies which talk about the embrace. The horizontal talks about the bird's eye view, looking at the whole thing, trying to swoop around and understand all aspects of the system. system 